is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this beautiful uh, blue flower. It's kind of a made-up flower. It's not really a specific flower. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how I painted it on a large red wine glass. This is actually a 20-ounce Libby wine glass. And I will show you how I did the hand-painted hand painted flower on the glass. So let's get started. I've already cleaned the glass and I am going to, actually I probably should have started off by showing you the paint. I'm going to do Folk Art Aqua Multi-Surface Wicker White, which is also the Folk Art Multi-Surface. Thicket, which is the Folk Art Enamels. Citrus Green, Folk Art Multi-Surface. Burnt Umber, Folk Art Multi-Surface. And then the Folk Art Sunflower, that's the enamel. Okay, those are the paints I'll be using. Starting with the Aqua. Brushes will be a one quarter inch scruffy brush. This is a one stroke brush. The fine Fine Line Westonia Nail Brush, my number 12 flat brush, one stroke brush, flat, and then my dotting tool. I don't know what the sizes are of those, but anyhow. All right, let me go ahead and proceed again. Sorry about that. Anyhow, so I'm going to go ahead and do this, this particular design on this glass. I'm coating it first with the aqua and then I'm going over it with the enamel, or I'm sorry, not enamel, but with the white, the wicker white. And then going back over it with the aqua again. For one thing, this will give it some extra protection because the paint will, will be thicker by doing it this way. And as I've mentioned before, when you paint with the glass paint, it is more durable if it's put on thicker. You just have to be careful how thickly you are applying it because it can bubble when you're, when you're um, baking it. But this thickness should be fine. With this flower that I'm painting, you can do either... Um, five or six petals depending on what all you can you can fit into your your design and I'm just trying to make the end of the leaves be a little bit not um, so like even or whatnot it's a little bit scruffier so they're not just a rounded or a tipped petal Be a little uneven. I'm just going to take my time as I'm doing this with the coverage um, just to make sure that it is opaque. I prefer a more opaque look with my painted glass. That's just my preference. If you're someone that likes more of the stained glass, you may even want to look for a different type of paint because there are paints like Peebo out on the market that are have a tendency to be more of a, I don't know, stained glass type of looking paint as opposed to uh, like the folk art enamels or the multi-surface paints. I don't really consider them to be that type of paint. Not that you can't get a more um, transparent look with them as you can if you apply the paint lightly but I don't think I don't technically recommend that with these because I do feel like they are definitely more durable if they're applied thickly or thicker and not more transparent just my opinion And this is not a one stroke stroke. I'm basically doing 
single, except for that one, doing single colors at one time. And not double loading. I have, just so that you know, I already had cleaned off my glass before painting on it. That's important that you clean your glasses. Uh, you can do that by, you know, washing and drying them. You can also do that by using denature rubbing alcohol on them. Um, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with, you can do both. The main thing is that you're getting, you know, like oils from being handled, that type of thing, that you're getting that off the glassware before painting because your paint will adhere better, better to the glass if you make sure that you clean it. And I don't typically show that on here. I think I may have a video. Not, I don't remember. Would have done it a long time ago. That will show you. That's pretty simple. You can just take a paper towel or cotton ball, that type of thing, and clean, clean off your glass. And then proceed with painting on it. You know, now if you're somebody that, that really can't just paint uh, flower petals on their own without, you know, you can always, and I'm going to have to show you this, you can always tape a design to the inside of the glass and paint it that way. That's fine. Perfectly fine. Just make sure, and I always try to remember people too when to tell people when they're baking your glassware. The big concern I have is that you don't place your glassware in a hot oven. You make sure you put it your glasses in when it's off, it hasn't even been fired up yet, so the oven is cooled. And then you make sure that you add your preheat time to whatever the manufacturer recommendation is. And then you cool your item before you remove it from the, the oven. It gets time to cool. The biggest problem with glassware is that it will break when the temperature changes quickly. That's why you have to be careful with it. All right, so my next flower is going to actually overlap a little bit onto the next the next um, flower that I just painted next to it. That's fine. That's the intention. All right. Do this. And this might be a little longer video just because I'm trying to take my time doing this, getting the petals just right. And I apologize if you're hearing my furnace kick on. Someday we won't have to have a furnace on, but our weather here seems to be, honestly, the last few days have felt like fall, more like fall than, than the fact that we're in spring. Now once I'm done painting this, I am going to, basically it'll be sitting overnight because I'm not going to bake it right now. Folk art enamels, you can actually allow them to dry by air. And I do believe I'll have to check on here too. I think you can do the same with the, um, the multi-surfaces too, but I'll have to check that. I'm not, not 100%. But anytime you buy a paint for your glass just follow the manufacturer's you know suggested 
bake times, that kind of thing. They're, they vary, and I hate to say this, but a lot of times they vary, they do vary from one brand to another. So just because my paint with the Folk Art Enamel says to you know, allow it to dry for an hour before you bake it, doesn't mean they all say that. And with Folk Art Enamels, you can actually allow them to air dry and not even have to be baked. So that's different than some. Some actually require baking in order to cure the paint. So it just really, when you, when you question me about, you know, what, what's the drying time or what's the baking time or whatnot, you really need to go by what the manufacturer states. Um, once you've got experience in the paint, you know, if you feel like you can deviate some from what they recommend, you know, that's up to you. Trial and error is fine. But I would definitely know what I was doing before I shipped out the glassware to somebody and not have done it correctly. Because you're not going to have a happy customer. Also, one thing I need to remind you, I feel like I need to remind people in general, is that when you're doing this, no two are going to be alike. They'll be similar, but they're not going to be alike. What I'm painting right now is not going to look like even like the one I just painted. And I also have to tell you that if you're trying to do custom orders, you know, definitely make sure that people are aware of that. Say you have a product that you're, you're going to have as a, a custom, you know, you're allowing it to be a custom order. So I have a, a glass on my site. Maybe I haven't painted it for a while. I definitely want people to be aware that it's not going to be identical to the one you see in the picture, especially if it's been a while since you've painted it. And the reason I'm stating that is you got to keep in mind you it's been a while since you've painted it. Maybe you've got better at the painting. Maybe you forgot totally how you did it. Now, if it's one you're doing every day, or you're doing a lot of, because I've had those too, then that might be a different story. But, just like one order I'm doing right now, the glassware, when I do these videos, I'm trying to sell these. These are one-ofs. These are not really meant to be a custom order. But I had somebody request one as a custom order for a set of, of 14 which is fine, however, it's been a while since I've painted the other one. I mean, quite a while, since last summer. So, do I remember? No, I really don't. It wasn't intended to be a custom order, so I had to make sure that person was aware, hey, you know, this will be similar, but it's not going to be identical. It just isn't. Not happening. I mean, it, you're never, when you're doing freehand, is it going to be identical to begin with. But if it's something that you are not intending to make it a custom, customizable order item, multi, make sure people are aware of that. You know, if you decide, yeah, okay, I'll do, I'll do a set similar, make sure they're aware of that. It's just good business, and I just know from experience now, even if I've done a video on it, with just one particular glass I had, I still did similar, but it's not identical. I mean, hopefully they'll like them. But truly, when I was doing the or when I was doing the glass to begin with, I had no intentions of it being a glass that I. I was just trying to do it as a, as is type glass, and this is you're actually getting the one that I just paint. You know that I'm showing on here this is what you're getting you're not getting a newly painted one it's never been used but it's this is one you know I have them here have them ready to put in shipping 
but until you're ready, you know, until I, somebody buys one, buys it, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing, I'm not going to pack it up. Definitely not packing it up. Yeah, I just like to give you pointers because I really, some days I, I don't look like I've painted a lot of glassware, but I really have. That's I was like, huh? But I got away from it doing the bridal hangers, and those have kind of petered out a little bit. And so I'm trying to get back into something I really enjoy doing, which is the painted glass. Definitely my forte as far as on uh, glassware and doing videos. So that's why I'm here and doing what I'm doing. Sorry. I'm trying to keep making sure that I'm on the on the camera here. So anyways, if there's a flower you'd like for me to paint, please let me know. I'm still going to continue trying to do painting as far as doing actual brushstroke kind of stuff and painted designs on paper as well as on the glassware. And then I'm also trying to include my my painted stones. I'm still trying to figure figure how to proceed with those. So if you have any thoughts on those, I'd love to hear that as well. You know, what direction I should go with them. Because I really do like painting on them. I always have liked doing the stones. And I've done a few, you know, custom ones for family members, friends, and their families. My biggest downfall with them is the writing. I need to get better at that. But I think these are pretty. I love the blue. It's uh, or the aqua. I think in the camera it's looking a little bit more like baby blue, but it's really not. I'm not sure why it's coming off that way. If you enjoy my videos, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, please make sure you give me a big thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Help me grow my channel. I would love that. As I'm currently trying to build my channel, Sometimes days don't allow me to have a whole lot of time, but I'm definitely trying. done with this part of it. Alright. Now what I'll probably do, because I want to tap in the centers, and I did this on my my demonstration piece, or my picture piece, I should say, that I started out the video with. I did it on that. I'm going to hit it with my tool, my heat gun, so that I can tap in the centers and have this paint somewhat dry. It's not going to be completely dry, but it's a little bit better than putting it in when the paint is completely wet. Now, if you're painting this at home, you can just let it sit and dry for a little bit 
maybe an hour or so. If you're not wanting to allow that time, then I would say, I mean, you can go ahead and try to top it in, but you're probably going to get some blue in it. Okay, so, let me stabilize my camera here, sorry. Alright, so I went ahead and did my, my heat gun on it. I'm going to take the little scruffy brush and put on one end of it. It's going to have sunflower and one of it will have burnt um, umber. You can't really see it all oh, very well, but the brown is really kind of almost close to the close to the color of the bristles. Okay, and I'm just going to start tapping it in. Now I may have to work on these a little bit. You know, just to kind of get it filled in some. It's a pretty big hole. So you can make your, make the center of it a little bit more closed. So that it's not such a big gap. But you're going to put the little dots there anyway, so it's okay. It'll work either way. And you're just tapping it. Tap, tap, tap. Hopefully you can see that. So you can keep, you know, manipulating it. Don't try to do it too much so that you end up with, you know, muddled, a muddled mess. Okay, and we're just going to keep doing that. Just turn it. And you can make them go different directions if you want. Again, they don't, it does, they don't all have to be the same. I'm just tapping it in. And I just keep dipping my brush into, into the paint. Say dip, 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 dip. Get it kind of smooth it out a little bit. And then since I do have a little bit of a gathering here, or opening I should say, I am going to put some more yellow there. And kind of fill that in. Almost kind of reminds me of a bird's nest. When I do it like this. You can turn your brush a little bit too when you're doing it. Doesn't have to all be precise. So I'll make it look de decent. Okay. Then we're going to go for the big hole right here. This one, I think I'm going to kind of turn it this way because I don't want them all going the same way. And this one is a pretty good size one. So I just want to make sure we're all covered. I'm tapping this in. And I'll probably go back and throw some more brown in here and then come back down and swing it around. Put some yellow up in there. More brown down here at the bottom. There we go. Happy with that. All right, so I'll put that aside. The next thing that I'm going to do is start adding in the leaves. Now I will be double loading using the Thicket and the Citrus Green. Do you believe that's what I said I was using? Yes, I get a couple of them mixed up. All right, so on this, it's just going to be, I'm just going to be sporadically putting the leaves really you can do some of the like I like to vary the leaves a little bit I mean they're basically the same kind of leaf but some of them I will put the lighter green on the outside well, on both sides of both petals and then some of them I will vary that I'm gonna do two coats here I did get a little I did pull up a little blue 
and again that's going to happen this blue is on pretty thickly so you have to understand that some of that is not even though I hit it with the dryer it's not dry but it's okay to me to have some of it come up it does not bother me I'm going to try to pull the stem through it like that and then I'm going to continue on just again like I'm saying I am going around putting these on here and some might have dark edges on the outside they're kind of my wiggle leaf some of them are going to have different one side will be light one side will be dark And like this one is an example of that clean my brush out a little bit I just I also want to make sure that these are opaque so you just have to be careful I'm gonna do it wrong do a little brushing there and then just keep going on down and then you can pull either side you can do light or dark however you want to do it but you have a dark side and then you have a light side on the outside of it and that's fine that is perfectly fine I like the way that looks I think it's gorgeous all right so this one I might want to turn Let me do this this way so you can see it turn it and I'm going to actually Do this. And when you're doing it over the top of other paint, then sometimes it's easier because you're getting a more opaque look already. And then I'm going to do both sides are going to have the lighter color on the outside. It's still a wiggly, wiggly leaf. These are like my favorite ones to paint. That's why you see them so much. And then just draw it down. It can be a lighter center, you know, stem or a darker one. Doesn't matter. Up to you. But I'm just going to keep turning this and then adding some where I think they need to be. You want to try to steer clear of the the lip of the glass so that when people are drinking I'm sorry when people are drinking they're not putting their lip on the paint if possible if they do the paint is non-toxic so that's really not going to be that big of a deal but just so you know just trying to make similar similar amounts here And we'll just um try to think what else where else to stick one of these beasts. I don't want to have too much on one flower. Okay, let's do one of these here. Like I guess I'm gonna go over it a couple times just to make sure it's thicker. And then I'm going to try to do it where it has two different sides. Oops, I messed up there. And we'll do that. Just draw it through there. And see where else we can place one nicely. Without making too big of a mess. I'm going to do one down here. I think I'm going to do this one down here. It's going to go with the darks on both edges. I do do both sides dark. And then we'll add in some this little pull you know, a little easy one stroke kind of leaves see 
very easy, easy to do. I'm just going to pull a little thing through it like that. Okay, then I think we're ready to add in some of those little, little, and this is what I mean by that, these kind of leaves where you're just doing like that and putting it on, and this, and putting it on. Because you got to think, you know, nature, you're not going to have something where everything's going, you know, separate from each other and they're doing different things. That's pretty much how nature rolls. Not always perfectly placed. Not always. Not always. But these are pretty easy to do, as you can tell. It's not, doesn't take being a rocket scientist to paint a glass. Don't be afraid to paint on them. Just remember too, when you are painting, that they're very easy to paint on. If you don't like what you started doing, just wash it off and start again. Pretty easy. Easy, easy, easy. And I'm just putting some in these areas here just to kind of fill them in a little bit. I'm just basically putting it down and then turning. You can turn in either direction. You can make them Longer, shorter, fatter, skinnier, <laughs> doesn't really matter. Let's see here. I think I want to add some like this. Hopefully you saw that. So I'm trying to be vigilant here and actually look at my monitor here as I'm doing this. And as many of you know, if you watch my videos, I do get kind of carried away with leaves at times. If you're not a leaf person, then don't do as I'm doing. Minimalize it and make it your own. Because I, like I said, I like a lot of leaves. And if it may not make sense, that's how I roll. Okay, and I think there's one more that I'm going to add some leaves to. This will be it right here. So I've kind of got the leaves on, you know, variations as far as the colors go. Same colors, but they're put on differently. And two things I want to do is go back and I want to fill in the centers here. And I'm just going to do some dotting with my little dotting tool. You can make the dots as big, as full, or as little as you want. It doesn't matter. Dot to your heart's content or as little as you want. I just happen to like dots, so not being specific. But there we go. And here we go with this one. I have one more thing left to do and we will be done. Now this, this particular drawing, I'm not doing anything on the stem of the glass. If you want, you can, you know, run greenery down it. I'm not. I'm just going to leave it plain. Now here's where I'm using this tool or not tool, but this paintbrush, the fine liner, nail liner. And around each one of my centers, I'm just going to go like this. And I'm going to run some over the leaves because I feel like if the leaves were in the way, t technically, it, it would do that. So, you know, you can do it either way, either way. 
I just like having it, having the color. And I think it adds some interest, and I love these brushes. Now, these I'm making pretty big. If you don't like them as long, then make them shorter. If you want them to go around part of the center, then make them go around part of your center. I happen to like them just being kind of out there. Um, that's how I want them to be. If you don't like that, or if you don't like it at all, then don't put them on yours. But I love this brush. I'm so glad I, I found this brush. Because I feel like I can just do these kind of designs like that so much easier than, than your typical liner brush. And I, I just never, never really thought about using fingernail tools or painting glass, or painting anything for that matter. And you would just look. You know, you just go like this, and you just have a more of a whimsical kind of look. One thing fun about glass painting is you can just move your glass around and keep painting on it. I mean, just see how much that, that adds to it. You know, make them fun. Make them fun. They don't have to be so serious. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've enjoyed painting it. I like painting the glassware, now I just need to get these sold. Like I said, I planned on doing a live sale. I just haven't had time to get it set up, and I don't want to do it part way. I want to do it nicely. So stay tuned for that, because that is forthcoming. All right, so here we are. Have a beautiful design. You can, you know, gift this to a friend. A set of hand-painted wine glasses or... I mean, everybody loves wine anymore. It seems like there's a lot of people that drink between that and craft beer. It seems to be a big deal, too. Um, but just think of giving, you know, a set of hand-painted glasses to somebody for a present. Or just say, hey, when you come over to my house, you're going to drink out of some fun glassware. There you go. All right. Well, that's it for right now. Again, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Like this. If you like this video and share it with your friends, give me a big thumbs up. And until the next video, I will see you then.